Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for having me here this morning. I want to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting, the Wajok Noongar people, and I wish to acknowledge their continuing connection to country and the contribution they make to the life of this great city of Perth and the whole region uh, that we are in today. And I want to res extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the audience today. I know that there are many people from the continent of Africa here today, but I know there are also a number of Australians in the audience. Uh, and those Australians, whether you, you live overseas or you live here, uh, will soon be asked to vote in a referendum to uh, recognise Aboriginal and Strait Torres Strait Islander peoples through a voice to parliament. Uh, I believe and I support uh, this uh, a uh, referendum wholeheartedly and I think our nation will be lifted up when Australia gets the opportunity to vote yes and indeed does vote yes for recognition, listening and a better future for the Indigenous peoples of this country that have cared for this land for over 65,000 years. Uh, and I urge you all to get behind this yes campaign uh, and if you're eligible to vote and you're overseas make sure you get to see DFAT uh, <laughs> and go to your local embassies and consuls uh, and get that vote in. Uh, encourage all your friends also to vote yes. Uh, I want to extend a warm welcome uh, to all the distinguished guests. I know there's a huge uh, presence from the diplomatic corps here that I've just uh, got to meet, uh, both the Australian uh, officials and also officials from nations right across Africa. So thank you so much uh, for being here. And I want to also acknowledge my friend and parliamentary colleague, Australia's Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Tim Watts, who's come all the way up was on the plane from Canberra uh, from us, uh, but represents uh, Jelly Brand in, in Victoria. And also uh, the member for the North Metropolitan Region, the Honourable Aya Shiot, MLC, who's in the audience uh, as well. There she is. Uh, congratulations uh, to you, Aya. Uh, so welcome to Perth and, of course, to the great state of Western Australia. Thanks, of course, to Pay Dirt Media and Bill Rapp for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, this conference on its 20th anniversary with this conference making its 21st iteration since it started in 2003. As we all know, uh, Bill Repide has been the driving force uh, behind this conference for many years and a, and a significant figure in the resources industry media, uh, keeping us informed and entertained. Thank you so much, Bill. Uh, I'm, as a proud Western Australian, I'm absolutely delighted this event is again uh, taking place in WA. Uh, Perth and other parts of this state have long been popular locations for expats from nations such as South Africa and Zimbabwe to build their new lives, explore opportunities and make valued contributions to the state and to the nation. Across Australia, around 400,000 people can boast African heritage and they are making a substantial contribution to Australia's social and economic wellbeing. Uh, indeed, my ministerial colleague, Dr Anne Ali, the member for the seat of Cowan, was born in Egypt and it would be remiss of me not to mention the magnificent Michael Frederick, uh, one of the great players of the Australian Rules Fremantle Football Club, who is also rightfully proud of his African heritage. We share many other things in common with our friends from African nations and one of those things is, of course, our natural resources. Our resources play such critical roles in our respective countries and in the close economic ties many of us share. Australia investment, Australian investment in Africa is significant, particularly in the resources sector. Uh, and I, I'm really proud to be the person responsible for the resources uh, portfolio in this country. The resources sector has moulded Australia's past, is a powerful force today and will shape our future. Events of recent years have challenged the sector, but it's remained strong and will continue to flourish. It generated a record $460 billion in commodity exports last financial year, accounting for more than two thirds of total merchandise exports. The sector directly employs more than a quarter of a million Australians and contributes approximately 13.5% to Australia's GDP and the global demand for our resources is projected to grow at a steady rate over the coming decades. Friends, the road to net zero runs through the resources sector. Without the critical minerals, without the iron ore, without the copper, without the gas to process all these materials, there is no net zero. The World Bank estimates over 3 billion tonnes of minerals and metals will be required in order to produce the renewable technologies, technologies necessary for the global zero, net zero transition. And this transition is expected to drive an exponential growth in demand for critical minerals and key minerals in pursuit of those goals. 
Australian, Australia and African countries can both benefit from the global trend of supporting a low carbon and resource efficient sector to meet our climate and environmental objectives, while also being socially inclusive. Australia is currently the largest producer of lithium, with WA alone accounting for 50% of global lithium extraction. Uh, and we're also the world's largest bauxite producer and the second largest producer of alumina. Much like Australia, African nations are abundant in the natural resources required to produce critical clean energy technologies. 50% of global cobalt reserves are found in the Democratic Republic of Congo, 30% of manganese is in South Africa, over 12% of the world's graphite is found in Mozambique, Zambia and Tanzania. This presents great opportunities for us to work together across international borders and that's already happening. As an example, because I know they're represented at this conference, I've seen their, their little stand outside as Australian company Ionic Rare Earths. Ionic uh, Rare Earths operates in Uganda and develops rare earths from iron clay, ionic clay projects. The company is focused on developing its flagship Makatu Rare Earths project to become a globally significant supplier of critical and heavy rare earths to support that global green energy transition. The Australian Government has an ambition for this country to become a renewable energy superpower and a major exporter of clean energy and products. This will add more value to our commodity exports and grow our domestic manufacturing sector. We already capture the opportunities the transition presents for clean energy commodities like copper, nickel and lithium and we need to continue to do more. International demand for Australia's lithium, rare earths, manganese, cobalt and other minerals crucial for clean energy technology does remain strong. Uh, but to be competitive in this global environment and to successfully capture downstream processing opportunities, we need to do more and to invest more. Uh, earlier this year, I announced our government's critical mineral strategy. It sets out our plan to grow the industry and maximise opportunities presented by the great endowment we have here of critical minerals. The strategy recognised the role they will play in net zero and decarbonising economies right across the world. Africa, like Australia with its minerals endowment, will play a key in this global endeavour. And when it comes to sharing ideas and perspectives, it is worth emphasising areas where we as a nation can add real value. One that springs to mind is environmental, social and governance standards, or ESG. Sustainable and responsible progress toward net zero for any nation on any continent will only be possible if our extractive industries are underpinned by a commitment to the highest of ESG standards. And we are wholeheartedly committed to supporting the highest standards possible. It's not only about contributing to the global net zero ambition and economic growth, it's also about delivering benefits to communities, to culture and to the environment. Uh, again, this is where an area where Australia can work together with our counterparts in African nations. The Australian Government knows how important it is to invest in the skills of people, in people and the capacity of institutions. Building capacity in the mining sector across Africa is a focus for Australia. We want to support governments in Africa to deliver responsible, accountable and effective mining governance. Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade plans to run an Australia Awards short course on mining government late, governance later in the year. And we want to make sure more women can access these capacity building initiatives and to eventually take up uh, more roles, senior roles in the mining industry. I think at this point it's worth uh, mentioning and perhaps reflecting on the now sadly discontinued International Mining for Development Centre run in partnership with the University of Western Australia and the University of Queensland, which do very good work in supporting uh, African nations in improving their systems of industry government, governance and mechanisms to support environmental sustainability. Uh, having been involved in that centre, it's something I reflect on deeply and we'll keep looking at how we might revive that one day. It was a great program and it really had a lasting impact. If I can turn for a moment to talk about uh, METS, uh, Mining Equipment Technology and Services Sector. Uh, we have a, a, a vast range of expertise in that sector in this nation uh, and there's an ability for that sector to be more present across uh, Africa as well. Uh, the METS sector is crucial to the evolution of mining around the globe as operators, including in your countries, look to extend mine life uh, and control costs. 
Many Australian mining and METS companies have been active across Africa for decades. Uh, the opportunity for mutual growth in the Australia-Africa economic partnerships in METS, as well as other sectors, is really enormous. Companies can capitalise on our track record in innovation, driven by the need to improve operations or reduce costs in a remote operating environment. The services Australian METS companies offer to the global marketplace are really incredibly diverse, from remote as asset management to big data analytics, machine learning applications and environmental monitoring services. These companies have established an impressive footprint across the globe, including in African nations. And then there's exploration. And again, Australia is immensely proud of its role as a world leader in exploring for minerals. Exploration is key to unlocking and accelerating resource development at the scale and the pace needed to reach our global net zero ambitions. The investments we have made in Geoscience Australia and the Australian Space Agency are allowing advancements like airborne imaging to map the location of resources and mineral deposits. Opportunities exist to use similar methods to map deposits across vast continents such as Africa. Space-based data, for instance, could be used to potentially find a wide range of minerals, water sources, sources of greenhouse emissions, uh, improving the productivity of mines by logistics planning and other untapped uses. One program, Digital Earth Africa, funded by the Yelona M and Harry B. Helmsley Charitable Trust and the Australian Government, is based on Geoscience Australia's Digital Earth Australia program. It is built on technology that Geoscience Australia created and continues to use through Digital Earth Australia program to come up with a raft of solutions to geological issues. Uh, they've reached, the GA has reached the establishment phase of Digital Earth Australia in 2021 with the South African National Space Agency appointed to host program man management officers going forward. From monitoring changes to the coastline to tracking the location and extent of water bodies across our continent, the program had already been used by scientists to tackle pressing issues of sustainability and conservation by effective regulation of mining activities. So this is another area with which we can share what we do. I want to thank uh, you again for participating in this year's Africa Down Under conference. I know it's coming to the end of, of the week, or it is the end of the week. Uh, the conference is an opportunity to emphasise how important the mining and resources sector is to Australia and places the spotlight on the resources and mining issues that we have in common uh, with many nations in Africa. Australia recognises the important role African countries play in world affairs and is committed to strengthening and expanding our partnerships within your region. The role our respective mining and resources sector can play in transitioning to net zero is only going to help us become closer as partners and collaborators in this great global effort. Uh, the future for both our continents is brimming with potential. Uh, I look forward to working with you to make the most of it. Thank you all so very much.